Hi, and welcome back to a uh, tough talk on C Hub Magazine with myself, Faustina Anyaw. And today I have with me my special guest, who is Mr. President um, uh, Christian Malanga, who is a politician, a businessman, and the founder and president of um, United Congolese Party. You know, so today we are going to be discussing, looking at the, the Congo conflicts. You know, um, decades of conflict and displacements, killings, and you know the rape of this particular nation. You know, as my guest, you know, is an aspiring candidate for presidency of that country. We want to find out what are his plans, what does he want to achieve, what does he want to do differently. So you come with me. So welcome, Mr. President Christian Malanga. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming your show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. You know, the, 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 the um, Democratic, Democratic Republic of Congo for decades, over five decades now, have been, you know, misused, abused, raped, and, you know, as if it's been caused because of its wealth. Can you tell us what, what is your experience as a citizen of that country? What do you think about your country? Well, I think of my country, it's um, everything that we see in the Congo. I'm not there for the people to cry for Congo. You know, I am a generation that I don't want us to have a night to, to, uh, to cry. We need to have a night to see. Okay. We come from a race where a ra we come from a race where this race likes to blame, a blaming race. Okay. We blame the Belgium. We blame the West, we blame everybody, but we never blame ourselves. Everything I've seen in the Congo from the beginning until today, from independence, even from slavery until today, it was orchestrated by ourselves. Okay, everything is orchestrated by ourselves. It's orchestrated by our thieves. You know, the Congolese thieves, they've orchestrated everything that you see today in the GRC. So we don't have such thing as a uh, resource curse. We have something that which, which we call elder curse. That's what the black race has or, uh, or Africa has. We have what we call elder curse. You know, when we have something as an elder curse, we'll be blaming others than blaming ourselves for everything that we orchestrated. So in your question, when you ask, when you ask about the, the DRC from, uh, from everything that we've seen in, in our lifetime, because I wasn't born during colonial time, I was born in 83, but the only heritage our elders ever left us is conflict. Okay, and that conflict is still continuing by themselves. They don't get along with each other, they're thieves. And um, if any little thing, they blame others. You know, they're irresponsible and incapable of governing a country. You know, I want us to be a generation where we're going to live our life with, uh, with questions than answers. You know, it's time for us, for New Africa, to start asking our elders some really, really serious questions, which we haven't done that yet. So the, the, the new Zaire, which is the DRC, uh, uh, started that already. We already started that. So to ask ourselves some really real serious questions to see why are we, why are we where we are today. Okay. Now, um, there's this, uh, when I was researching about Congo, I found out um, you know, pre-colonialism pre, um, time, during the slavery and all that, you know, I, I read how both the uh, Portuguese and the you know, the activities of these uh, foreign powers at the time, you know, what, what the activities, I know that, you know, in your generation, you don't want to blame them. But at the same time, we cannot ignore history and where all the, at what point these things actually started. Now, there's a place where I found that at the point of, um, what's it called, independence, you know, because during the time of these people, they didn't. They denied the citizens of, you know, education, proper education. So I, I found that during during the when when the DRC when they got their independence, there were no engineers, there were no doctors, there were no. In fact, there were no elites in the country at the time, and they were not able to, you know, um, govern themselves when they when they said they got independence. How do you react to that? Well, the world was the world was there to extend us to give us hands. We had some professor from Hades. We had a different people who came from Ghana. 
we had a lot of people came out there hard headed as we always are. You know, you mentioned something about slavery. Yes. You know, we cannot be victim of someone who made a bad deal. Why we always talk about slavery, we, don't, we always talk about the buyer who are buying slaves, but we don't talk about the sellers. Okay, I'll ask you, and name me a tribe who used to sell slaves. We don't. We kept that as a secret. Why? That's hypocrite. And that hypocrisy has hurt us this generation. Okay, we are a race that we don't like the truth. Okay, yes, the slave were making deals. So who was making those deals? In all the countries in Africa, they sell less than a million, two million slaves. The Congo sold five million slaves. That shows you okay, how wicked those people are. Okay? And we never point fingers on them. And those tribes that still exist until today. Those offspring of those evils, those snakes, they still live until today. We don't talk about them. We talk about that white man who bought them. Okay? We moved to that in 1960. Well, to me, to run a country, you have to run like a business. Okay, people were excited. That was back in those days. People were excited in the 60s to get independent. They, they did not have the, the, what I can say, the diplomacy, I can say. Okay, how to address certain issues. But mm -hmm. the world was there to give us hands. Mm -hmm. They've sent professors from Haiti. They've sent different people to the communist the Congo. They didn't last that long. We kicked them out. Okay, we kicked them out. No one else kicked them out. We kicked those people out. Would you okay? want to... We kicked... Yes. Would, would you want to believe that, um, you know, after, after years and decades of um, being cheated on their own soil, they probably, the people at the time, I'm not trying to make excuses for, you know, we are trying to deliberate on yeah, this. Please, please, definitely, we, we yeah. have to, you know, have yeah. talk. Yeah, so don't you think that at the time, you know, probably the people at that point in time, they, they didn't have the trust for anybody coming from outside because, you know, because if they, if they open their heart and hand, to welcome foreigners and these foreigners should, should change them now how do you do you think they were wrong in not opening their arms again for whoever coming from another country again in, in the guise of coming to help i'll give an example okay. the congolese army were trained to oppress the people that was their training who, who trained them who trained them well the person was doing business with them at the time, could be the Belgians, could be anybody who trained them to oppress the people. And who are oppressing the people are the children in the house. I'm a father. If, it, if I find someone comes in my house and teach one of my sons to oppress his own, like, to oppress his own sisters and his own sibling, what does a father do? I'll knock, I'll knock him out. We didn't do that. Okay, they choose a group of people, a group of tribe, which is called the Bangala, to cut people's hands off okay to cut people's hands off to cut the, what to do all the rape to do all that our own we're doing that okay so after independence instead for us to have a reform our military reform we didn't have a reform we inherited like the same army we just changed the name do you think call was, sorry, was it fair that that made them to you know to concede and to do whatever the, their masters told them to do at the time you know a, a child, you know, we Africans, let's be Africans, so you're a mother, okay? When a thief comes to your house and a thief tells your son, your children to do something, your children's not doing, will I blame a thief? I don't blame a thief. If I want to be real, if I really want to help a future generation, okay. I'll blame my children, okay? okay? If we want to be real, but if we want to play the victim card, oh yes, it is supposed to do this to us, no, it's a past, it's already happened. Okay, what did we learn from it so it will not happen again? Okay. okay, so that means it will continue then. So a thief will continue to come and just let us. That's why we're seeing all this proxy war happening in the Congo because it became as a, a reputation start happening all the time because it's normal now. Okay. okay, so we need to put a stop in something. We need to cut that. So <clears throat> I'm not there to blame anybody. It was profitable for certain people during that time. Those days are gone. We're talking about today. How can we move forward? So during that time, we've done wrong. Those tribes still exist today. Those people still exist today. Okay. Do you okay. believe in? Do you believe in revenge? Or, you know, no, there's not. There, there, there's no such thing as revenge. It's for us to move forward. The best way is to educate them to okay. move forward. Best ways to see our mistakes. Okay. Why were we enslaving our own nation? Why did they enslave Nigerian in their own soil? Why did they enslave? The, the, the Kenyan in their own soil. Why they have to enslave us in our own soil? We have to take that 
Okay, that weakness to be our, to be our today's strength. Okay, mm -hmm. this was our weakness. This is our weakness. This is our weakness. This is our weakness. So this is how we have to change it. Okay. So doing all this uh, diligence from the past, looking at it, all this past mistakes, mm -hmm. we just we the, we this generation we understood. We've seen. You know, we are, we as it was in America, we bite the bullet. Like, mm -hmm. all right, guess what? You won. Okay. So how can we win again? Okay, how can we be successful? How can we not be a failure that we've been a failure since independence until today, we are a failure? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how can we start to being a failure? So that's the question that we have to ask ourselves. How can we move yeah. forward? Yeah, okay. there, there's something that um, Mohammed, uh, no, not Mohammed Ali, um, 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 what's his name now? Um, the, the civil rights man, um, Martin Luther King, Genial, you know, that he said at the time, he said in an interview, somebody asked him, why is it that the black people in America, the African Americans, we are not, you know, measuring up the competition in wealth creation and things like that. So he told them that, you know, let me cut it short now. I'm paraphrasing. So he said that when you ask someone to, you know, pull up himself by his shoe string, by his boot string. I give my shoes. And, and then this guy doesn't have a shoe. Which string is he going to be pulling? Is he going to be pulling his, his legs or his you know, toes and things like that? Now, looking at how, you know, um, looking at how Congo was left with so much um, disintegration, so much um, uh, confusion at the point of uh, um, um, independence, don't you think? You know, without not trying to blame anyone now, but to see the reality of that point in time, what it cost, so that you, so that because if you don't look at it that point, you might not be able to know how to continue from you know where to find the blue string. Okay, in that case, we have to make saints. We have to call Saint Mobutu. We need to call Saint Chombe, Saint Mulopwe, Saint. Uh, all those leaders, they have to call them saints. Why? Those murderers, we have to call them saints. Why? Nothing to do. I'll give an example. My firstborn was born in 2001. Mm -hmm. Okay. And today, he's 15 years old, which is turning 16. All right. What he has learned in that short period of time, it's mm -hmm. so much. Okay. Just imagine today, a 10-year-old, after 10 more years, it's 20 years old. What, what can that 10 year old accomplish? Look at the guy who created uh, Facebook, how old is the kid? Okay, so we cannot have an excuse for our mind to grow when you have leaders who screwed us. We had leaders who were criminals, like Chombe in Katanga was a criminal. Mobutu was a criminal. Okay, Kalonji Mulopwe in Katanga was a criminal. Chisekedi was a criminal. Okay, we had a lot of leaders who were criminals. So when we had those criminals, who prevented us from education, mm -hmm. okay, for us to now compete in the world. Why Niger Okay, look at Nigeria from 60 and look at Nigeria today. Look at Ghana from 60, look at Ghana today, okay? We all in the same hell, but we're different devil, but it's not in the same situation that the GRC is on. Yeah. Isn't today. That, that, and that was why I was referring to, you know, that so, it, um, is it the wealth of Congo that, that made them, it, that, that, that's cost the nation because there's so much wealth, you know, to, 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 to feed, you know, to, you know, in fact, every uh, industrial or techni technological industrialization or whatever it is, all the resources the wealth, from Congo. The wealth of Congo has not cost us any curse. Okay. The leaders have cost us a curse. Okay. Right now, I'll tell you, in a European or anybody would like, hey, listen, I need one ton or I need 100 kilo of gold. We have that gold in our soil. How many people are mining it? How many Congolese are mining it? None. But they'll let that white guy come, then they'll scam him the money as scammers. They'll steal the money away from selling fake stuff. Okay? Don't look like it because everybody wants the mineral from Congo, but who's producing it? Because we have scammers. We have the generals as scammers, police as scammers, politicians as scammers. So scamming has become as a profession. Okay, now you want to work. Now, is this how? Is this how? Um, if you have pre, pre, um, 
I want to call it pre-invasion time. You know, before the Portuguese arrived, how was Congo? What was the culture of Congo at the time? When at what Congo. point? Uh, sorry, at what point did the Congolese learn all these things you're saying now? Has you always Congo, Congo went down the second that they killed the, the, the what the the king was betrayed. Okay. The king was betrayed in one day they've killed over 1500 people i think that was like in 15 or 16 something i don't recall right was he betrayed to... by your people by the congo of course listen for any any enemy to come in your house and do damage mm -hmm. okay someone has to leave the window open i love that okay? someone has to leave the window open so one of us did yes okay and there's no way a bunch of guys can leave portugal and just come and swamp the congo with million of people without we doing anything. Okay. Okay. So it was, there's a deal that we did that was wrong, that which, which all of us has paid for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay and now. we accepted it. <laughs> okay. Now, moving forward then, let's presently now, you have a yes. president who is uh, Joseph Kabila. What, do, what is your opinion about him? What do you, is he doing okay? Is he it, is it doing anything good or better for the nation? I'll tell you, we have a guy who was a child soldier. That's one thing, okay. you know. My perspective first, I'll just give my idea so you'll understand what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. To run a country, you have to run a country like a company, like a business. There's this company you call Congo or the News IU with $34 trillion on tap. You have a child soldier who never even sold a bottle of water or somewhere. He never done a little like small commerce. Finally, you jump him in a position where you make him to be a president to sign out of $34 trillion and to manage 90 million people. Okay, that's a chaos. That's a disaster. Mm -hmm. And who've put him in that position? Our elders. We call them imposters. They call him different names. But for me, he's just a murderer. Mm -hmm. Okay, this guy's a killer. He's a straight killer. Okay. This guy's pleased by seeing women getting raped. Okay, that's what he, that's his fantasy. Okay, this guy's a man who brought us in the way in the lowest point that Congo lives and never feels so low that we eat cats. Okay, he brought the country so low that our musician or anybody had nothing in the country. He brought the country so low that ninety eight percent of the food that we eat is imported. Okay, he brought the country so low that we have the highest child mortality. He brought the country so low in his leadership. While well, I, I was a soldier there in his command, I had a worse command in chief. Okay, so here comes a child soldier who assassinated his own father. Okay, who I don't know, like, I don't know why all these African leaders are not even embarrassed to shake hands with such a person and they call each other president. It might be a crime. Uh, okay. They're all the same thing, isn't it? Don't you think so? So if they're all the same thing, but that's, that's what's taking Africa backward. That's why you see Africa, we're not even sitting at the table because we have nothing to offer. Okay, someone coming, getting the mirror does not mean we're offering something to the world. No, because without us as human, they'll still get it. But we as human, as black, what are we offering in the table? What are we bringing in the table? That's what talks. Okay. okay, so we cannot continue with this culture of Yasta, these heroes, to be today's terrorists. So we have to stop that. That's, some, not, that's like when we diagnose a problem, a cancer like that, we have to remove it. So okay. we have a guy like that who, where we have a high child mortality. We have a place like that where it's, going, it's the worst place to be a woman, the GRC, under his leadership. Women get raped every day. So it became like a little social thing when people talk about, oh my God, Congo. Yeah, people get raped in Congo. Oh yeah, Congo's dirty. Yeah, Congo's this and this. No, what are we doing to stop it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so under this guy's, leadership we just mentioned Kabila. it has been the worst embarrassing leadership where we can't even okay contribute the way we're supposed to in the world just imagine this the congo has enough hydroelectricity hydroelectric that we can supply the whole africa with electricity but can a deal be done no if you bring the money you'll be scammed so no, it's getting investors away. So there's no job creation. 99% unemployment in the country under this guy's leadership. Doesn't even know what is job creation. He doesn't. All he knows is like, oh, 
I used to make hundred dollars a soldier. Now I can make a million. I can fly first class. Oh, I have a private jet. So that's life. For the rest of the people, he can care less. And who is he accompanied by? Our own elders, our own people. No, no Western, nobody, ourselves. Okay. Now, um, the, the conflict, you know, has continued. And I think even since, uh, since the last uh, two, this year especially, you know, the conflict has really come back. And the estimation of people that are already being killed and um, displaced is, you know, is just staggering in this modern time. So what is the way forward? What can Congo do to come out of this? Congolese people have been oppressed for so long. The Congolese people, they've been oppressed by their politicians. Their politicians, they have studied the Prince Machiavelli from the teeth. Okay, that's their best way to run people. Starve them so they don't think about politics. They've done that to those people. Okay, if your own justice system, your own police rapes you and murders your mother and they still walk free, who would you go tell? Okay, the only way things can happen is the African Union, okay, to stop being hypocrite, to stop being all of nine interfering policy bullshit, okay, to get things serious. Because when they're looking at us, they see us all as black. When Congo is failing, Africa is failing. You know, because when Congo is moving forward, Africa will move forward. I'm, we're sitting on 34 trillion. We have half of Saudi Arabia when it comes in, in oil. We have natural gas. We have anything that we have, but it's not open to the business, not open to the world. Just imagine today, South Sudan, having a, a refinery in South Sudan, having a refinery maybe in, 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 in Nigeria, some product coming from, well, from cobalt, our cobalt refinery in Nigeria. How many jobs will that give to the people out there? Okay. We, look, we Africans, we look good on paper, but in reality, we're full of shit. Excuse my French, but that's real. That's the language they have to understand. We're full of shit. Okay, but if we want to be real, Okay, let's start changing things in the Congo. Let's create for the Congolese a space. Okay, let's create a space for them to express themselves. These people are ready to go on the streets to overthrow this government. The military are ready. But the only way they'll know that they're ready, they can do this as long as they know that all their African brothers are with them. Okay. Okay, now, um, sorry, sorry to cut you short. Oh, no, please, please. Yeah. If we, if you watch now, you can see that in fact almost every country in in Africa, you know, has a looting leader, a leader who is um who is willing to sell the people, who is willing to see that the people, you know, perish and they take whatever money they think they get. So if 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 Congo as an independent country want to move forward and is looking at um United, um, sorry, I'm looking at African Union to stop being hypocritical. Do you think that is a feasible idea or plan to get out of that? It is definitely, definitely. As I say, you, you, if you look at all the march that we've been organizing in the Congo lately with the students, the protests that we, we, uh, we've been organizing, people getting shot, and we've been having silence. And the only person, the only people who speak on our behalf is the European. The same white people who we are, we are taught that they are the bad people, okay? Who speak on our behalf? The European Union. Who brings sanction? Those are the people that are bringing sanction on our behalf. What are our African leaders doing? Silence. Silence. Radio silence. Yeah, it's that, that... normal for them, for what's happening. So if we can create an environment for them, like today, if a president of Ghana, okay, or Nigeria can go on TV today, say, you know what? Kabila, you are out your mandate. You need to step down. If yeah, not, we're going to put some... Right. We are saying the same thing because we know that these people are not going to say this. They say, they're not going to say this because they themselves are doing exactly what he is doing. So why do we still want to depend and wait on them to speak up? Is it not um, like now? You see how the Arab Spring, you know, came? You know, I'm not advocating for violence, but I'm giving an example now because if a people want to liberate themselves, it's, they said, how um, um, freedom is not given, is taken. Now, if you're waiting for Africa Union, for the youths of your country to take back their country and rebuild that country, it's not going to happen. Don't you think so? Which African leader has a, 
a, a, a, a clean slate that somebody can start from somewhere to write up. They've done it. You know, we've seen that. I'd like to apply uh, pres the, the president of, uh, of uh, Botswana. Okay, the Botswana president, he was out there to scream it loud. I'd like to apply the, the, the Kenyan uh, Congress. They were there to speak it loud. There's so many people are out there, they just need to speak it loud. The reason that we don't want to go that other route, the, 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 the Arab Spring, we have night neighbors, okay? We have over 10 million, uh, over what, 100 million people in the Congo. The second we start flooding our neighbors with, uh, with, uh, with refugees, it will be a chaos, okay? But we can have a surgical operation that can take place and remove this cancer. You know, it doesn't mean if we have a breast cancer, they have to start cutting the head off. Or, no, it's just have to target what we have. Okay, so same thing with the DRC. The DRC is something that we have to target. I've targeted them with sanctions. Okay, I've, I've stopped Kabila's financials. We've stopped it thanks to the, the European Union, some friends in America, we've, we've managed to stop that. We've stopped some uh, financing, that, some aid that was coming from the UK, thanks to our friends in the UK. Okay, the only people who haven't made a move yet Okay, it's, it's the African leaders. Those days of Che Guevara taking guns, AK-47, getting to the bush, those days are gone, sis. Those days are gone. We're not in those days no more. We all can take guns. I can take guns. I can take guns and get to the bush. But how many innocent people do we kill while those people are hurting us are living luxury? Okay, the bullets, not, it's not even getting to them. Okay, but okay. that's not the right thing. I wanted to hurt. ask you, I wanted, I wanted to ask you um, now, you know, if you, if you, I wanted to ask you this question before you even went into it, I was going to say, as a new generation, you know, uh, as against waiting for Africa Union, as all the nations in Africa to come forward, don't you think it's better to have, to start building, um, building your own allies? For example, if you watch now in, in, in Europe, you know, they don't always agree on everything. For example, like going to bomb Syria recently, Germany did not agree. But Britain and France, they have a particular kind of friendship or alliance that makes them to always agree on the move they want to make. Don't you think it's high time that Congo, like yourself now, with your party and the new idea, the paradigm that you're bringing, to start forming small, small allies with certain nations, at least some of the nations in Africa, you know, that has at least a president or leadership that has a bit of conscience. Definitely. We've started that. That's why we see we, I am where I am today. I was in Addis Ababa. I was in different, I met with different leaders and those leaders are looking forward. Okay. We just, as I say right now in the DRC, everything is ticking. Okay. We just want them to slip a little bit and then from there we can move. Okay. All right. So we have a regime that's already a fallen regime. Mm -hmm. All right. We have a regime that is hated by 90, like 100, 120% of the people hate them. The military hate them. Me, myself, being a captain in that army, they all hate them. Okay. The reason that we just don't want, we just don't want to bloodshed. Okay. So we know that there's a certain way once we get, we gain the support of our brothers and sisters, once they see a leader, okay, who has a vision like what I have. Okay, they can help put give hands so we can move forward. So we are in that process. We are in that process and we're still moving in that process. If a nation like Britain or America offers to help you remove the sitting president, would you accept that offer? That's not a sitting president. We, can, we have to correct that. We don't have a sitting president. We have a man who is violating the constitution. Okay, okay. who violated the constitution. He's there for high treason. Okay, which is Article 165 for our Constitution. So we don't have if we don't have a, a legit president or an institution. So the Congo right now is just a big jungle with no leadership. Okay. 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 So, now, but he's taking the position and role of a president. So invariably, he's leading the country, whether legally or illegally. So my question is this: If if an external force, America, U.S., um, America, Britain, or let's say United Nations comes now to offer, okay, enough is enough. We want to remove these guys so that we can have a properly elected president to lead this country. Is that an offer you would take? How embarrassing is that? Just listen by that. How embarrassing is that? How can I even look at any African leader in the face after that? Why not just name it the United States of, 
like to be one of the 50 or something uh, states of America, if we can go to that route, it would be embarrassing for us, Africa, if we can preach what we're preaching today about African pride, Africa standing up, if we can be irresponsible and capable of taking out a, a child soldier ourselves after all these years of independence, after all these years of we having all this military, we having in all this nation, African nation, it would be a really embarrassment. Okay, well, if the British saw, today- we, we saw it happen in Libya recently. We cannot get our maturity from the Libyans. Okay, that, that we cannot compare their maturity with our maturity. We cannot compare the Arab Africa with the black Africa. Okay, do we have different interests, different something. For Gaddafi to be knocked out, it was a different deal, it was different something. It's not even something that we African we have to be proud of in 21st century. It's a big embarrassment. Yeah. Okay, it's better for me just to wash my hands. You know what? Let them just rot. I'll leave, I'll go back in the States, I'll live my life. Because if these people are not even capable, okay, this continent is not even capable of like, like governing themselves, guess what? Let's get like, let's get let's, let's get their children to come to colonize us again. Okay. <laughs> I'll just welcome them. Hey, come, come, come and colonize us. Come over, come over, and colonize us. Because it will show that we're not there yet. But okay. I know that we're already there. Because I know that we're there. We don't, have much, that. we don't have much time left. I want to ask you another question. My question now is now, you formed um, the, the, the United Congolese Party, you know, um, after seeing what happened then, the 2011 uh, election yes. or something, the, and the uprising and things like that. Now, what is your plan with the party? All right. My plan is to, 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 to see new generation to come in. My plan is to see what has hurt our country the most. What has hurt our country the most, it's women, okay? They oppress our women. My vision is to empower our women because when you, there's a saying that says when you educate a woman, you educate a nation, okay? For we to speak of a nation, it has to start first in our house because if our home is not run right, things are not gonna run right. You are, you are in London. What does a white man do first? He protects his women and he protects his children. What do we do? We expose them. We do the opposite. So the second that Congo will empower the women, which I'm doing to, to women empowerment, to empower our women, to give them the tools that's necessary, okay, to bring some radical uh, reforms, okay, to our women. That's how I'm gonna take the country. But for the meanwhile right now, I wanna see this regime, okay, taken out and all of everybody in this regime to be held accountable. So if they're held accountable, okay, there's so many, so many things you're speaking of history, there's so many things we can learn from. We can learn from the French. The French with their king. They whack the king, they whack everybody. I'm not saying to whack anybody, but the searching example that we can bring in Africa, it will bring a shockwave that mm -hmm. it will scare anybody for the next generation now, to run the country right. Thank you. Now, to, to, to conclude, you know, if you're making any change now, you know that your target audience is going to be the youth, you know, especially people from your age, people from your time, you know, and coming forward. Because from history and from what we've learned, you can see that the elders have really felt us completely. So now, what do you want to tell the youth? What advice you want to give to African youth in general? African youth, I want to tell you guys, culture change with evolution. We cannot hold some old ass tradition someone created a long time ago. We still hold it today that we have to respect elders. That's some crap. Okay. And now if it's stupid, call him out stupid. Okay. Our nation will move forward. It doesn't mean American are not polite. It doesn't mean uh, European are not polite. They're more polite than anybody else they are. But with their elders too, they also put them in check. Ask what has destroyed us. Okay, African, because we don't ask some serious questions. The same people, because it's old and it's still continuing with this bullshit, okay, we still are, we're, we're plowing, we're, 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 you know, we, 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 we just like encouraging them, okay? So those are the things that I want to tell African youth. African youth, it's time for us to speak out. It's time for us to stand up and be a voice for Africa if we want tomorrow, because there's no heritage these elders left us. Thank you so much, Mr. Christian um, Malanga, you know, president of United Congolese Party. It has been a pleasure to have you on the show. And I hope that African youth, African people will learn so much from your mindset. So thank you so much. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.